Hey guys, welcome to your pick a card reading. Um, this is going to be about what does your higher self want you to remember? And you can think about this in a few different ways. You know, it can just be, what do you need to remember about yourself? You know, maybe about a younger version of you, a more innocent and free version of yourself uh, that, you know, something that might've been kind of beaten out of you through the ups and downs of life. It could be something you're supposed to remember or that, you know, you want yourself on some level to remember from a past life um, or, you know, however it kind of fits in with your worldview. And so we have uh, three piles here, pile one, pile two, and pile three. And go ahead and pick one using your, you know, your intuition, your gut instinct, um, whatever one called to you first. And, you know, I just got to say, it's funny. I pulled a card like out of the deck, not out of one of the piles. Uh, before I started just to test the camera. And I remember thinking, you know, oh, what if I get one that's kind of weird and, you know, excuse the tone for the reading. Like I didn't, I didn't know if I should really, really do that. But what I pulled uh, was the Fool card, which I'll actually, i actually show you here, pulled up this Fool card. So I sort of view this as the overall tone for this whole, you know, expedition we're on here. Everybody's reading has this tone of the Fool. So I feel like we're all getting the opportunity to have some kind of fresh start, you know, uh, almost like a return to innocence, but also we're embarking on this hero's journey. And I really like this fool card. She's holding up, um, you know, a wand up to the sun standing on the cliff. Looks like she's dancing, overlooking the ocean. So... I thought that was a, an excellent way to kick off this reading. So you can find the timestamps below in the description box and we're going to jump right into pile one. Okay, pile one, welcome to your reading. Uh, the first thing that jumped out at me here is this King of Cups. I think this is definitely you on your journey. Um, coming from a place of conflict with this five of wands and what gets me about this five of wands as opposed to you know more standard decks uh this is the mystic monday tarot by the way is how ambiguous this conflict is right we don't even see the people fighting we don't even see that these are specifically wands or you know, even a weapon, they're, they're just like crossing beams of light. It's almost like the lines have been crossed. So, which, wow, as soon as I said that, maybe you've been through a con conflicting situation where the conflict hasn't so much been, you know, physical. It has been maybe verbal, maybe a lot of, uh, <laughs> I mean, I almost wanted to say emotional abuse. I mean, I hope it's not, uh, nothing like that, but definitely, uh, arguments have been going on and, you know, when you kind of, maybe when you come home, sometimes, you know, if you're living in a situation that is just not, you know, good for you, you come home and you immediately don't want to be there. You feel that heavy energy in the room and you just don't feel comfortable because of the, the conflict that's like ringing in the air, right? I feel like that's where you've been, been coming from, but <laughs> as the King of Cups, you're, You've done an excellent job of not letting that, you know, completely derail you. You've actually managed to rise above. Here you are. Uh, this guy almost looks like, almost like a merman coming out of the sea and he's holding his cup. And this is almost like a chalice. It reminds me of like a chalice of victory. And you've gotten to this place of being the king of cups where I feel like you've managed to really maybe even if you haven't been able to extricate yourself physically from this uh, conflicting situation, you've managed to get yourself out of it emotionally, like find a state of, of balance and emotional maturity that allows you to sort of, you know, swim through the waters and ride the current uh, despite all of the like hostility that's around you. You've really risen above and gotten to that place of maturity. And so heading into your more uh, onto the topic of the reading is, you know, what does your higher self want you to remember? It's definitely something about 
walking your path. Like, look at these two cards. <laughs> you know, the Eight of Cups uh, has this, this path leading down through your cups to, um, I'm assuming that's going to be a sunset. It could be a sunrise. The Judgment card also with that same, almost with the exact same graphic, the same path. Uh, and it's bookended by these doors um, and shit, there's pyramids and, you know, bodies in the sky at the end of it. Um, I feel like you're really being asked to walk your path and that you've walked this path before. And that is why you have been able to be the, this King of Cups. Um, maybe you didn't ever feel like you could be, uh, you know, embodying your emotional stability like this. Uh, but the reason you were able to do it, even when it seemed impossible for you, is that you've done it before, right? Whether that's when you were younger um, or in another life where you were really able to rise above. But I feel like this is just uh, the beginning of your journey and you're really being asked uh, to remember your your trajectory or not necessarily like your purpose. Like, I don't feel like you have to have a, a specific mission or even a specific goal, but just remembering that you're here to walk your path and, and like live, live your path, live your life. Uh, the eight of cups always reminds me of, you know, your 40 nights in the wilderness, <laughs> you know, the, the old, the old biblical story. Like, uh, if you think of the Rider weight tarot, you know, he's going off into the mountains to sometimes people feel like the eight of cups is really a like a turning your back on something or uh, a sorrowful departure but i don't see it that way i uh, in this card i really don't think sees it this way it almost looks like she's getting ready to jump in to like into like water and like swim right it looks like she's just already dangling her feet in and it might be dark and uh, gloomy which is a bit scary, you know, if you've ever jumped into cold water, you know, you know, you know, is that what that what that is like, but um, this, you're going to be passing these cups, which are almost like uh, lines of initiation, you're going into the sunset, or the sunrise, right? So walk your path, whatever that is, you know, this is with the eight of cups, it really, really, to me is a, a spiritual awakening. Um, and I mean, if you're watching tarot videos on YouTube, you're probably, you know, either already very awake or going through your awakening. But either way, whatever it is, even if you've been super spiritual your whole life, even as a child, um, that can always keep evolving. You know, you don't need to plateau. And actually, with this King of Cup Cups, that can sort of indicate a certain plateau uh, spiritually because, you know, he's the highest evolution. He's he's the king of his suit, right? He's the, his, He's like the end of the journey of the cups, you know, before you, you're moving into the major arcana. And I feel like a lot, sometimes people, I mean, with everything in life, right? Like learning about stuff in the career and wherever they're at in life, uh, and especially spiritually, people will get to a place and be like, oh, this is where I wanted to get. This is where I wanted to be. It's awesome here. I've gotten this level of accomplishment and I want to just sit here and be like this. I mean, that's fine, right? But eventually you're going to get tired of the plateau. And I think a lot of people start to see signs of that externally first. Like even you think, oh, I'm happy. I'm happy in my plateau. I wanted to stay here. But you start seeing these little signs, these little hints uh, and, you know, whispering in your mind going like, I want more. I need to do something more and it doesn't even need to have have to be better it can always be a lateral move um but just to keep evolving and keep changing and to embark on your journey to walk your path with this eight of cups and with judgment here <laughs> like man these cards you know you could just like you know swim through your eight of cups here and then come out to the judge to the judgment with these portals, I feel like you're going to be, if you walk your path, you're going to be finding yourself uh, in some kind of initiation into something, into some, almost some kind of, 
not necessarily a spiritual tradition, although you absolutely could find yourself, the first thing that came up to me is, you know, you could find yourself being completely surprised by becoming like a, a, a shamanic apprentice or something like that. Um, you know, you could end up meeting people, falling into situations, and you could find yourself in a completely new trajectory. And the judgment card, sort of that that energy of like the spiritual reckoning or the spiritual justice, I feel like you're going to be returning to your own and being reminded of gifts you had in your past. And this is really your opportunity to remember to walk your path and on your path, you're going to be remembering your, your gifts and who you really are. And I think that's all I will say about the tarot cards. Let's move on to the oracle cards here. Cracked open, rock bottom, surrender to the alchemy of life. Surrender to your path. Look at her, she's cracked open like an egg. But what's coming out from inside it's like she's breaking out of this she's breaking out of her shell absolutely and what's coming out is it's like her light body definitely you walk your spiritual path you come to your your initiation and your your spiritual justice there might be an uncomfortable sensation of shedding your skin here or or being cracked open and i think you know anybody on a spiritual path has had those initiations where for a while, they feel like they're going crazy or like their whole lives are falling apart, you know, those tower moments. But when you've gotten through it, you find yourself transformed and then you become totally not just accepting, but also thankful for everything you had to go through because now you're this, you're so much more expanded and more evolved. Yeah, once you hit the, if you feel like you're at a rock bottom moment, sort of at the beginning of your path. Just keep walking forward because you will be emerging, you know, as a being of light. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. Beautiful. <laughs> these, these moonology cards, I typically don't feel like I need to say too much about them because they sum up what's happening uh, so well. <laughs> you know, this it's just so synchronous. Uh, your judgment is coming. Your spiritual justice is coming. You know, the answers you need are coming. They're on that path. Maybe at the end of this door, right? You might have to swim through all of these cups. You might have to go through your first portal all the way to the second portal between these, these uh, pyramids. But, you know, the answers are out there. All you have to do is keep moving forward. Earth pulsing. Pulsing mother or <laughs> pulse of the earth mother, slow down, time in nature. Time in nature. Just like what I was saying with your, uh, the eight of cups representing to me the, um, your 40 days in the wilderness. And to slow down. So you might be going through a period where you're really taking time uh, for yourself, really meditating um, really in solitude. And I feel like with this King of Cups card kind of representing you, that that might be rather uncomfortable for you. Maybe, maybe you're an extrovert or maybe you're, you know, you're an introvert that loves to be around people, which <laughs> those do exist. Um, and that this kind of isolation might be quite uncomfortable to you. It might feel like you're being cracked open or that your foundations are falling apart, that you're Maybe your relationships and your friendships are kind of scattering away from you. Um, but, you know, <laughs> the answers you need are coming. This is all going to be resolved if you keep moving forward. But you don't need to rush through this. Like the Eight of Cups is not a rushing card, right? It's your 40 days in the wilderness. What would you do in the 40 days in the wilderness? You would, you know, if you're just wandering, you don't need to be on. You're not trying to get from A to B as fast as possible because you're kind of going to be there for 40 days no matter what. Um, you would slow down you would take it easy. You would sit and at least what I would do, I would sit and, you know, really commune with the forest. If you're in a forest, you know, maybe you're in a desert or some kind of jungle or a marshland, wherever you're at, you know, with mother nature, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of biome you're in. 
you can slow down, enjoy the beauty. And I think you'll find that even without all of the, the humans around you that you're used to kind of filling your environment with, uh, even if it's not humans, I just, I just, uh, thought of, uh, even if you're already an extremely solitary person, um, like myself, maybe you're used to filling your, your kind of mental space up with input from like reading, you know, or video games or whatever it is, you know, I, I actually, you know, had this realization that, you know, I, I always, I never wanted to hang out with humans. I always wanted to spend time by myself. And I mean, I'm still like that. I'm just like, I'm like one of the most introverted people you could, you could be. Uh, but I was constantly just filling up my mind with, by reading, like, you know, reading, reading, reading all the time, reading fiction, reading nonfiction, whatever it is. And I really was like, well, this is really no different than being like the most extroverted person because I'm just filling myself up with, you know, external stimuli. It doesn't really matter if it's a book or if it's a living, breathing human, right? It's all, all the same kind of input. So I really had to learn to just slow down, to meditate and to just sit in nature. And if you give yourself time to, to slow down, to meditate, if you like to meditate, uh, and to commune with nature. And I mean, I'm filming this in January, so it's in its winter for me where I live. Uh, even if it's winter, um, do what you can to, to get outside, uh, if you can, uh, and if you can't, you can still, you know, look out the window, go to the library. If you have, if you can find a library with a really, uh, a window looking out on the scenery, even if you live in the city, like get a potted plant, like get a cactus, right. You, that you can just put, or even like a little succulent. They don't even need to be watered. Just, you know, get a tiny little plant. You can put them on your desk or next to your bed or on your kitchen windowsill and, you know, you can put all of your focus on that one tiny little plant as as a way to connect with nature, right? Even if you can't, even if you live in the middle of a really of a really dense city that is really far away from anything nature, even if it's in the middle of winter and it's like thirty below. Um, uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, talking a lot more about the nature uh, aspect here than I sort of intended, but uh, that kind of tells me that for somebody uh, that's really important for them to maybe prioritize that more than they're used to, right? Uh, and that, that you don't need to rush down your path, that you can stop and smell the roses and that your path is filled with these beautiful cups along the way and you will get to the end where your answers are regardless. So try to enjoy the journey. I guess just to sum up. So the thing that your higher self wants you to remember is to remember, remember to walk your path, remember who you are as you walk your path. And remember to stand, to stand in yourself as the King of Cups. And I think that's all I'm seeing for pile one. So we're going to head off to pile two. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. And as you can see, we have the 10 of swords here. So this is obviously the first thing that jumped out at me. Nobody really likes to see the 10 of swords. Um, I never really read it as it's not, not really the same as the death card to me. Uh, I know some readers read it that way. To me, it always speaks of typically like an ego death or the end of a cycle, particularly uh, like a mental cycle. Like something about like there's this person here, you know, has been ex is experiencing, you know, the final death of their physical body, of their of their embodied paradigm and Obviously in readings, you know, people don't die every time you pull the 10 of swords, just like death card. Uh, but whenever it comes up, uh, I have to think about what, what is ending. And then after the end, what will be reborn? Because there's never any really an end, right? It's always a cycle. Um, so what, it, what, it, what is ending here is strength, which sounds sort of foreboding, right? You're like, oh, I don't want my strength to go away. But what are you being asked, asked to remember here? 
And with the Two of Cups and the Princess of Wands, which is the Page of Wands, these are very, very feminine energies, very playful and really loving. They make me feel uh, like smiling and like dancing and playing. Uh, you're really being asked to remember to be lighthearted, to be playful, to remember that everything doesn't have to be so serious all the time and that you don't always have to be taming the beast. Uh, the strength card is, you know, a very auspicious card and I don't want to tell you to, you know, throw out your, your strength, right? Um, but it's always that energy of having tamed, tamed the lion, or in this case, the tiger, uh, tamed the cat, tamed the beast by kind of holding your inner strength and projecting that outward, uh, in a way so that you don't need to fight the beast, right? You have, you have tamed it through your inner strength, uh, which is very, very beautiful. But if you're being asked to, to sort of cycle through that, and head into uh, a more lighthearted time, that suggests to me that maybe you've been taking life a little too seriously. Maybe you've even been taking your spiritual growth a little too seriously. Uh, I mean, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It could even be your career, or if you're a student, maybe you're taking your school too seriously. You're kind of spending all of your energy I mean, you've been gathering it up inside of yourself and you've been projecting it outwards into whatever you've been working on, right? Whatever your manifestation is, whatever, whatever you've been working on manifesting. Um, but maybe you've gotten a little off balance. Maybe you've gotten, you've become so concerned about manifesting and about projecting your energy in a way that is taming things around you. All, I don't want to say controlling, but there could be a little bit element of that, uh, you're being, so you're being asked to remember that there's more than that to your life, that you don't have to be so serious. You don't have to be so um, concerned about outcomes all the time. It's okay to let that, to let the beast run free. You can let this tiger loose. It's, it's okay. You don't need to be taming it even in the most uh, loving, spiritually evolved way. You can just, you can let it go, you know? You can hang out with your, your lover and, you know, have some mojitos. You know, you can hit the beach. Wow, look at three of these cards have these twin peaks in the background. Wow, not, not all the cards in the Mystic Monday deck. I don't know how many of them have these twin peaks, but I've actually never really paid attention to them before. But here we have three of them. Maybe you've been... I feel like you've been climbing the peaks, but now you, you can take the middle way. Like you don't need to go over these mountains, right? You don't need to climb the peak and then descend the valley and climb the peak. You can just go through the valley. That's going to be a lot easier. Uh, and, you know, you can allow yourself to experience this love and it will be, I'm not really getting like a, you know, your, your lover is incoming kind of vibe from this. This is more Love yourself, right? Uh, allow your internal alchemy to just kind of sit there. You can you can gather your strength within yourself, but you don't necessarily need to do anything with it. You don't need to tame the beast. You can just love it. You can kick back, have a drink, you know, have a hot chocolate, you know, sit and watch Netflix on Friday night with a pizza and a bucket of ice cream. Like it, it's it's fine. You can take a time out, and you can be this this princess of wands. Look at her. Wouldn't you love to be her? I would love to be her. She's beautiful. She's barefooted with these flowing pants and she's got a wand, which this uh, tall, tall vertical wand with almost looks like the moon shining on its tip, right? She can manifest whatever she wants and she does it effortlessly. She might be a little bit naive and innocent, but that's fine. You know, there's time for her to, you know, evolve into the the king and the queen of wands later. She doesn't need to be doing that right now. She's on on her path and right now she's she's dancing in the sunshine with her wand. Um I feel like <laughs> uh somebody might want to get into 
I mean, dance, right? Maybe even if you're like 40 years old and you've always wanted to be a ballerina, why not? Why not try? You know, there, there, you can get ballet classes for adults and it's, you might feel ridiculous and you might feel stiff, but like, you know, you're just doing it for yourself. Obviously, you're not going to become a professional ballerina, you know, if you're not, because it's like too late if you're not like five, right? <laughs> but it's never too late to learn and have fun. Um, you know, I picked up a, a staff, actually, when I was first kind of going through my, my spiritual awakening, right? I really got into something called contact staff. It's part of like the flow arts. Uh, you might have seen like poi which are those like led light up balls into strings that people like spin around people play them at like raves and uh anywhere where there's like edm uh kind of scene uh i mean if you <laughs> if you feel like it you can look up uh you know contact staff or flow staff uh, on youtube and and see what that's all about but you know i i was like 30 years old and i bought this staff and i started you spin it around your body sort of like a a giant bat baton you spin it around and you do tricks with it. And I felt ridiculous because here I was 30 years old out in my uh, backyard that was like not private at all, right? All of my neighbors and people like driving down the street could see me like just being ridiculous, beating myself up, covering myself with bruises and just dropping the stick, you know, thousands of times in a row while I was trying to learn how to how to do tricks with it. Um, but that was really just really fun and liberating for me. And I just had to learn to do it, even though I felt ridiculous. And it it was so much fun and really, really was I don't, liberating. I mean, I know I said that, but that's, that's the <laughs> something about holding the staff makes me think of that. So if you know, if you're feeling that secret hidden desire to, to do something, just for fun, just for yourself, even if it seems ridiculous, even if you seem too old, even if you seem like you'll be horrible at it, uh, take this as your inspiration to just, you know, go ahead and try it. Like, what's the worst that could happen? You'll, it'll be fine and it'll be fun. And re remember to have, remember to be lighthearted and carefree, which is what I'm seeing here. It's definitely your message. And I, I feel like you don't, with the Ten of Swords, you don't even need to, like, work on this. It's it's going to happen. Uh, the Ten of Swords can't really be, in my experience, uh, it can't be, like, stopped if it if it's coming. Um, so you might be listening to this going, oh, there's no way that I can learn to be more carefree. There's no way I can learn to let go and to do something just for fun. But... It might seem impossible now, but give it a few days, give it a few weeks, give it a few months. Slowly, 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 it's going to happen. I don't see this happening like violently. Um, you know, I don't see this being a tower moment at all. Uh, the Ten of Swords, uh, I can actually see that unfolding slowly with the rest of these cards. Uh, let's see what we have here with the Oracle cards. Water your garden. Yes. Nourishment, body care, tenderness and rest. We have this person bathing in what looks to be a secret pond. Can you guys hear my cat meowing? His name is Bear and he's black and he's fluffy and he's pacing around where I'm filming right now. Um, there's nothing I can do to quiet him. Uh, <laughs> so just take that uh, as part of your, your background ambiance. Uh, and any energies that are happening for me right now are also energies that you're syncing up with. Um, so I'll let you imagine what the meowling of a irritated old grandpa cat might mean for you. But <laughs> uh, back to water your garden. Nourishment, body care, tenderness. That's totally giving me the same vibe here. And uh, I'm getting totally distracted by my cat. Um, and he's going behind the fridge. Um, I'm going to actually have to pause the video and <laughs> see if I can take care of him for a sec. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. But uh, again, that, that is part of your reading. So the very fact that, I mean, we have this, this cat... Uh, the strength card and the whole reading is about uh, kind of letting, being reminded to let go and enjoy life. And now uh, here I am getting really distracted by a cat that is agitated and is having trouble settling down. <laughs> um, that That's 
it's just, it's so synchronous. So you might be feeling a little bit like my cat, a little bit like you're pacing around and you can't just settle down and enjoy a sunny spot by the window, which is what I'm trying to get him to do. So <laughs> back to this, this feels to me like a, a secret, you know, grotto, which is just emphasizing, like, I think the princess of wands would love to nourish herself and to relax and to take the waters here at this pond. If you've ever wanted to go to a hot spring, like a natural mineral hot spring, go for it. That would be, that would be wonderful. Nothing is yet set in stone, mutable moon. All right. And now the cat has, now the cat has uh, aggravated my dog. Okay, so right when I pill, right when I pulled mutable moon, nothing is yet set in stone. Uh, both of my cats and my Chihuahua both all got into a uh, a bit of a row, <laughs> and I like how this is lining up. You know, we had the the upset cat lining up with the the cat on the strength card, and here we have uh, uh, my furry family, uh, you know, lining up with the ten of swords. So. With the mutable moon, I feel like there's a certain level of uh, instability. You might feel, I mean, especially going through this Ten of Swords energy, uh, feeling rather uncomfortable, feeling rather discombobulated, uh, agitated, anxiety, um, really unsure, and maybe in a way that makes you want to act out. And that's okay because you're going through this transformative process. You know, mutable means changeable. So... The way you are, the way you have been with your super serious use of your strength, that doesn't need to be the way you are forever. Um, but you also don't need to give it up forever, right? Once you have expanded to be able to include, you know, this Two of Cups and Princess of Wands energy, to be able to water your garden, I, I really feel like you'll be able to step back into your strength energy from a much more balanced perspective. Um, it'll be that, that personal alchemy, like the two of cups here and coming together where all aspects of yourself, you'll be more complete, more whole, more aligned, more balanced. Um, but you know, you're not quite there yet. This is your, this is your, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> it's almost like all of the different flavors of the stew are simmering together and you're going to be coming out, uh, much more whole and complete. Uh, last card. You are not alone. Isolation, physical connection, community. Maybe you want to get out there. Maybe you've been, <laughs> maybe you've been holding people at bay with your, with your tiger, with your strength energy. Maybe you've been holding back. Maybe you've been more concerned about controlling the outcome of your social situations and not just enjoying other people's company. And trust me, guys, I'm the last person to lecture people about, you know, be more of a people person, be more social. Um, I am, I, I don't want to call myself antisocial, but I'm definitely asocial. I don't typically get much out of, you know, hanging out with people unless they're, you know, my very, very closest inner circle. Um, and I had this card for, come up for myself uh, a few days ago. And I really felt like I was being called to uh, spend time with humans and in a way that is non-judgmental and just enjoying the ambiance and the energies of a group of people in sort of a similar way that I would enjoy sitting in a garden and enjoying the ambiance and the energy of, of you know, a bed of flowers or a grove of trees. Um, I mean, this wouldn't come as a surprise to people who are really, uh, really people people. Um, but if you're not a people person, this, I feel like on your path, uh, the Princess of Wands, I feel would be a very, um, a very social person. She would really like to go out and connect with people for the, for the inherent pleasure of connecting with people. Same with the Two of Cups, right? That's all about, um, I mean, look, these people are <laughs> have their arms entwined while they're sharing drinks. 
So if you have, if you, if in the next little while you have any invitation invitations or you feel called to initiate any, um, any type of social contact, uh, this is your invitation to go for it. And I think that will help you um, become remembering how to be lighthearted and carefree and remembering your inner child. And I think that's all I'm seeing for this reading. So we're going to head right into group three. Hey, group three, welcome to your reading. So what do you need to remember? Obviously, we have three kind of, you know, unpleasant energies here with the seven of swords. What I really see with this particular seven of swords is <laughs> the battle is over. We have all these swords stuck in the ground. Uh, like the, the she's not fighting the battle anymore. She's not in the five of swords, but she's holding a sword behind her back. She doesn't really realize that the battle is over. She's still ready to fight. It kind of reminds me of almost like a PTSD energy. She she can't relax. She can't let go. You know, she's holding this hand up, you know, with like a like, you know, I'm going to get you. Like bring it on. I still have I still got this sword behind my back. You don't know it's there. Um, but you know, almost like she's going to lure somebody in and take them out, right? Um, but I don't really see this as a, like, she's out to get people just because, you know, as like a bloodlust or ruthless thing. I feel like she's been stuck in, in a, a combative zone for so long that she's gotten so used to fighting and so used to, uh, knowing that everybody has it out for her and she always, nobody has her back. She has to have her own back. Um, and she's kind of gotten, you know, PTSD about it. And <laughs> because of this, she's completely trapped. The Eight of Swords. She's right walking through the swords, the story of the swords. With the Eight of Swords, you know, again, the battle is over. There's eight swords stuck in the ground all around her. And, you know, she's blindfolded and her hands are tied, but there's nobody keeping her here. She could pull pull that blind like her hands aren't that well tied she could pull her blindfold off you know presumably she could even snap those like what is what is that even it, it she's just not she's not securely held she could get out she is trapped by her own mentality of thinking that everybody is out to get her right she's gotten so used to it that it's become her constructed reality. And I mean, again, with the five of cups, look like this card is all wrong, right? It should be sideways with the sunrise and the sunset. And if it was sideways here, if she could change her perspective and see that she had three cups upright, even if two were, were spilled, the three of them are upright and she's watching the sunset over the ocean. This would be a good place to be, but instead she's here where everything is all wrong. Why, you know, her her view is completely skewed to the point where, you know, the, the ground is vertical and the sun is like setting right to left. <laughs> um, but man, I just, I've been, I've been in these dark places where you can't, you can't see any hope. Everything about your world seems wrong. Everything is out to get you. Nobody has your back. You're completely alone in a world that is just chaos. I've been there. I, I get this. But what are you being asked to remember? <laughs> we end this journey here with the Emperor. You are being asked to remember that you, you are the emperor. This is, even though these are women here and we have cups, this is very masculine energy to me. Um, you know, with the swords and the five of cups is such a, it's a, such an unstable emotional situation uh, and ending with the emperor. So it doesn't matter if you're male or female. Um, 
I feel like you're being called to tap into your masculine energies. If you have some kind of fracture relationship with, with men or masculine energies, even the masculine energies within yourself, um, it's time to take a look at that. Time to maybe maybe heal that and, you know, reach out, you know, for resources, uh, for help, you know, either just ask the universe for help with this or, you know, look for healers or, you know, information just on the internet. You can just start a Googling and see what comes to you because something can always come up to help. And, yeah, as you can hear my cat, if you can hear, hear him, uh, he agrees. <laughs> he agrees with what I'm saying. He's walking by and uh, calling, calling out. Uh, and it's funny that um, I I just thought of, uh, of my cat bear, the one you can hear meowing is a, uh, he's old now, but he was rescued when he was seven. And, you know, he was declawed when he was a kitten. And he had a lot of trauma. You know, he spent years uh, hiding in the cupboard wouldn't come out and he's he's been sick he's had all kinds of health problems and you know he's a cat without claws he's a, he's a cat without claws but <laughs> this reading could almost be for him because he has become the emperor uh you know we have a chihuahua and another younger female cat and he rules the roost now he has healed he has claimed his place as you know the as the the grandpa figure in the house um he doesn't have any more PTSD. I think he's healed of his trauma. And even though he doesn't have any claws and even though he's 16, um, he actually charged in front of a large, like, German Shepherd style dog uh, to protect my Chihuahua. Uh, we were in, we were outside, uh, outside of my front door and bear my cat never goes outside he just goes and sits in the window uh, in the doorway and my chihuahua was outside um so my chihuahua was outside and the neighbor dog came running up the street to you know attack him really he wanted to play but my dog didn't know that and bear the clawless old man cat came outside charged between the two dogs and was hissing and was absolutely trying to protect um, you know, <laughs> his little tiny buddy, the Chihuahua, and the you know bear is bigger than the than the dog than our dog, the Chihuahua, and uh, and that was really to me the moment where he became the emperor because he charged out there despite all of his trauma, despite all of his fears, despite the fact that he is actually defenseless as a cat. Um, you know, and I feel like you guys are are heading to a moment like that. Well, you will remember your strength. Come on, camera. You are being asked to work through all of your trauma, all of your fears, even, you know, even if real physical harm has come to you, you can, you can remember your, your inner power. You can remember your, your strength and your ability to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and then claim your throne, you know, and that you won't be wielding your power against people. You'll be gathering your power to yourself and, you know, using it to protect others, you know, to protect, <laughs> to protect the, the little chihuahuas, you know, around you from the big scary dragons that are charging up the street. Um, you've got this. And I think it's going to be, you know, if you're really kind of more of a right brain person, um, kind of, you know, prone to depression and anxiety and, you know, maybe you're really artistic and really, really intuitive, um, really with those more right brain energies, uh, with all of this masculine energy, I feel like you're being called to tap into your left brain. You know, maybe you're being asked to look at, uh, a situation more logically, really do, you know, lay out the facts, you know, get, get the data, do your budget, do your planning, um, using your logic and your your reason to overcome all of these problems of perspective because the you know your masculine your left brain energies is where you can find stability where you can find order in chaos you know left brain and right brain you know ideally you want them balanced right we don't want masculine or feminine, feminine, you know, left or right brain. We don't want one of those 
taking supremacy, right? We don't want a patriarchy, but we also don't want a matriarchy. We don't want to be like turn our right brain off. We also don't want to turn our left brain off. We want everything working in harmony and take it from me. <laughs> I've been at both ends of both extremes and it doesn't work. You need to balance. So perhaps you have had a fractured relationship with um, either with masculine energies or with uh, maybe logical thinking structure, um, scientific approaches. And so it's either time to heal that or to explore that further. And that is how you will step in to your emperor energy. And, you know, and that doesn't mean you're going to be throwing out your feminine or right brain, brain energies. But once you be, once you get them both in balance, you know, you'll be the emperor and the empress. Just going to make room for the uh, oracle cards here. Star Keeper. Cosmic Ancestor. Seed the light by staying grounded. To me, this is also a very masculine energy with this figure here in the blue star keeper, um, keeper of, you know, first thing that comes to mind, keeper of traditions, protector of people who can't protect themselves, see the light by staying grounded. I really like that. This emperor is definitely grounded. You know, you're grounded through your left brain and through your masculine energies because the the right the right brain is your is your your intuition and your chaos and your kind of unleashed power. Um, here, you're definitely, I think, being called to kind of bring it all together and get that structure and cosmic ancestor. I mean, if you guys have ever wondered if you could have had a life on another planet, <laughs> you might be making touch, uh, coming in contact with more inf information and more activations about that. Expect powerful change. New moon eclipse. Powerful change. Again, like I... You, you're you're going to be coming this emperor and you might be going through a period of of darkness right look at this look at this darkness covering the light but eclipses only last you know moments right when you come out of that you'll be able to seed your light from your position of authority on your throne earth school life lessons soul growth study higher learning <laughs> which is absolutely left brain and masculine energies. So if you've thought about going back to school, especially in a, um, in the sciences, uh, this, <laughs> this spread would definitely encourage that. Uh, but you know, you, you don't need to be going back to school. Uh, you can absolutely be going through whatever, uh, learning you need to do like on the streets, right? Earth school, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe you're being thrown into a kind of rough neighborhood and, you know, you're going to be learning some street smarts or higher learning. You know, you can be exploring, um, you know, whatever books and information on the Internet and videos that uh, appeals to you. And you can do an in-depth, deep, deep study of that without going to school. So this doesn't this absolutely doesn't have to be about school. But, um, you know, if that's been wiggling in your mind, take this as a sign to go for it. Um whatever it is, you would know what kind of life lesson or what you're being called towards, you know, better than I am. But there's definitely so much masculine energy going on here. And, you know, in this time of tearing down the patriarchy, we don't want to forget to, we don't want to be throwing the masculine out as we tear down the patriarchy, right? We want to be healing the masculine and bringing back you know, that, that cosmic balance in a way that is conducive to masculine and female and feminine energy, right? We need, we need, need, need that balance. And <laughs> I just, you know, th with this uh, black moon right in the middle here, that's really the focal point. And I think your balance is coming. We know it's coming because of the because of the emperor. Um, it 
you're just definitely going through some traumas and some instability and all kinds of change. And I really feel like something unexpected, uh, an unexpected shift might be coming, uh, be coming to you with this, this star keeper cosmic ancestor. Um, I don't know if any of you, uh, are into star seed, uh, information, but if, I mean, if you are a star seed, then you already know what I'm talking about. If you're not a star seed or don't know what that means, or if that word is calling to you at all, go ahead and Google it. Uh, if you're syncing up with this video, then you're definitely in for a ride. And I'm not going to go on a tangent on that because that is a whole another topic. But for now, you're just being called to remember. Remember your strength. Remember your logic and your reason and your masculine aspects. Again, even if you're a woman, you know, you have masculine energies inside of you. Um, and, and you need those in order to be balanced, in order to learn your lessons and come into your powerful, powerful change. Watch for any eclipses coming up um, whenever you're watching this. Uh, any eclipses coming up could be a very um, pivotal time for you. And I think that's the end of this reading. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. This is a, a brand new project for me. Uh, this is only my third video. So I would really, really appreciate it. if anybody watched to the end here. Um, please leave me a comment. Let me know if you resonated. Um, and please stay tuned. I will be doing uh, Terrascope style readings uh, for Aquarius season. And if you're watching this in the future, uh, please subscribe because I plan on doing this for quite a while and uh, should have lots and lots of videos uh, coming out. So thank you so much and see you guys later.